Cubs taking on the Miami Marlins. Hi, folks. John Chomby alongside Chris Singleton. And we got a notable pitching matchup in this one, Singy. We've all anxiously anticipated this matchup. You've got the ace of each club going face to face. No excuses today. Our best against their best. We'll see how it turns out. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. About to get started here. And today's starting pitcher, Jesus Lazardo. Chris, he's got the ability to take control of a game when he's out there. Well, incredible mound presence, and he's going to attack hitters. You look at that strikeout per nine ratio over 10 coming into this start. So he's a pitcher that wants the ball. He's aggressive. He knows that he can get the swing and miss, especially when he needs it most. We'll see how effective he is in this one. All right, ready to get underway. So up now for Chicago, Nico Horner. Strike two. Out there on the mound, he's setting the tone early with the fastball, 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. No, oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base paths. It's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Ian Happ up to hit. The Happ daddy. The 2 1. Run around the move. Next pitch is popped up. Cooper settles underneath it and puts the squeeze on it. That's out number two. That is cool. The designated hitter. Say, uh, Suzuki. So digging in, say a Suzuki. Obviously, a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And the pitch. Going, Runner takes off. Cut on and okay. missed. Throw to second. He's safe. I think that still kind of sets the tone, not just for this game, but for the entire series. First inning, game one. So that kind of tells me they're going to be aggressive on offense and try to force the issue whenever they can. And a ball and two strikes. Swings and misses. It's a strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. One left for the Cubs. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Welcome back. Our starter in this one, Marcus Stroman. His career ERA has been under four. What I like most about him is his reliability. Takes the ball every fifth day, ready to go whenever the manager calls. And at the plate for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris. And it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Gets under and pops it up. Wisdom drifts towards it. Hauls it in for the out. That is second. The first base Garrett Cooper. And now it's Garrett Cooper up to him. One down, base is empty. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Mancini snags it for the second out. Ball's just not carrying the first tonight. <laughs> now, you would actually say that to your teammate in the dugout. No, I'm not that cruel. But someone would say it to me, and I'm sure it's probably been said before. One of the coolest moments of Marcus Stroman's career, Chris, he was the MVP of the 2017 World Baseball Classic. Team USA won gold. He took a no-hitter into the seventh inning of the championship game. Really so awesome to see how guys buy into the WBC in spring training. They really take it seriously once they put on that USA uniform.
And he can't come up with it. We all know that that first inning can be a critical one in terms of guys settling in and the tone being set for the game. So this isn't what you're looking for on defense. Two out errors are a lot like two out walks, but maybe even worse because your pitcher did his job to get what should have been the last out of that inning. Solaire off of first with two away. Check swing. He went. And it's one and two. And the pitch. Swings and misses. Struck him out. One left for Miami. Scoreless after one. Top of the second, Trey Mancini now. The first base. Chris, you know what they Ray call Mancini? Ray. Boom, boom. That's right. For Ray Mancini, the famous boxer, it stuck when he started hitting home runs, though, in baseball. Bounced, and that got the pitcher. Tosses to first. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Catcher coming out to check on him. It looked like it got him on his back leg. So you wonder if that might be a problem for him in terms of pushing off the rubber. Yeah, it's a great point, and we'll have to see how he looks. But to me, it appears he's moving pretty well. I think it's just going to sting for a while, but hopefully nothing more. One down. Here comes Cody Bellinger. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon, the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and got? off the field. Bellinger checks his swing, appeal to third, and he held back, according to Ricky Holiday. The pitch. And there's a rocket into the outfield. So a man aboard now with one away. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Man at first with one gone, and next for the Cubs, Patrick Wisdom. Over to first, and he's safe. Runner on the goal. Pitch misses. Safe at second, and he easily steals the bag. Well, he picked over once just before the pitch to check on him, but that didn't seem to slow up his jump on the pitch at all. I think that guy's been studying some video. Awesome job to be prepared. Got the timing down, and he gets into scoring position. The 2-1. And now two and two. Daryl Parker assigned to umpiring duty behind home plate. And Boog with DP, it's sort of a coin flip on those borderline corner pitches. Doesn't really favor one side of the plate more than the other. Sometimes you'll get a little extra of the plate, and sometimes you won't. It does seem like he evens it out over the course of a game, though. Right side. How much were you aware of the umpire scouting report, or even who was going to be umpiring? Not a whole lot. I mean, there were a couple of umpires that weren't real good. But outside of that, you just kind of went into the game, especially back when I was playing. And he handles it himself for the out. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four guys, nicknames, hometowns, and as well hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit <laughs> that's great gonna count one and two, one ball, two second inning here no score fights that one away still one and two Jan Gomes waits there's a swing and a drive that's back there and that one is out of here. That'll fire up the dugout. It's his sixth home run of the season, and they jump ahead in the second. It's 2 nothing. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch. Absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. 
Digging in, Nelson Velasquez. That one in for a strike, two and two. Kicks and fires. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a miss, struck him out. The high heat, too much on that one. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Miami, Abasayo Garcia up to the plate. The right fielder. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Righty to the plate. That's a ball. Stroh, a former first-round pick out of Duke back in 2012. When he was at Duke, he actually was a two-way guy. He played middle infield. He still loves to shag taking ground balls at short or third or second. Really good athlete. That one hit to right. Garcia gone on the play. And there's one down. That exists. The third baseman. Gene Segura at the plate here. Here's a 2-1. Fouled off. He was late. The 2-2 on the way. On the ground, right side. Corner. Fires over to first. Two up, two down. Two outs, space is empty. Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. Let's go, Miami. That one catches the zone. That's strike two. And the ball right evens the count. I don't know how you take that one after the called strike on the corner, just a little bit off the edge. Here's the 2-2. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They trail it here, 2-0. All set for the start of the inning. And stepping in is the speedy Nico Horner. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. So now one and two. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Some high cheese for strike three. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Yeah, Top yeah. of the strike zone. We're seeing more Andy. fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. On the ground, right side. In plenty of time to first. First two batters retired here in the top of the third. The left field, number eight. Two outs, space is empty. Ian Happ, the next Cub to hit. And another ball. Three balls. One strike. And now it's filled up. And a pitch. On the ground. Throws to first. Third out, and that ends the frame. Three up, three down for the Cubs, but they hold the 2 nothing lead.
Back here at Lone Depot Park. Here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. The catcher. Nick Fortes. Right hander kicks deals. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. And the righty deals. Got him swinging. Well, that's a blue zone right there, or the cold zone on the hitting chart. Just shot. doesn't have much success in that part of the strike zone. And a really good job of the pitcher executing. Try to go there as often as you can. The numbers are in your favor. John Birdie at the plate. Here's a guy who's been struggling so far this year. It's only late April, but still hoping he'll turn it around soon. And that one fouled off. Line drive, base hit. You can't do much better than that on a pitch that far outside of the strike zone. Got him in a chase on the two strike count, but he wasn't fooled. He hit that ball really well. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Hit on the ground, might be two. Swanson fires over to first. That's the second out. The back out. The first base baseman. Garrett Cooper. And here's the first baseman, Garrett Cooper. 0 for 1 so far. Birdie at second with two down. Ground ball right side corner. Throw to first is in time. And that is that. So one hit is all they get. Three innings complete. It's the Cubs two and the Marlins nothing. Back here at the ballpark, John Chambi with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Seiya Suzuki. The two one. Oh. Good eye right there. Three balls, one strike. And that one is lifted in the air. Makes the grab on the run. One away. Now that the first base. Trey. Trey Mancini now at the plate. Grounded out his first time up. Wind to the pitch. Inside three and two the count. That one hammered center field. Chisholm ranging back. Back some more. Pulls it in on the warning track. Man, I love that route. The ball was smoked. He knew he had to get back to the track right away. Turned his back on the infield, got to the spot, turned around, and made a nice catch. Pitch misses there. And now three balls and a strike. Comes up empty. That's strike two. He got away with one there, but he knows he can't go into that spot very often against a guy like this. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. The wind of the pitch. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. 
Nothing doing here this half. To the bottom of inning number four now. It's the Cubs two and the Marlins nothing. Bottom of the fourth, stepping Lead in the long Jorge ball threat, Jorge Soler. The designated hitter, Jorge Soler. The 1 1. Ball two. And strike two. The next pitch misses, and it's a full count. Now in this three-ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. It's his sixth home run of the season, and they're on the board. It's 2-1. That one was a hanger, and pitchers typically don't get away with making a mistake like that. And right there, he made him pay. Lisa Rise stands in. His first at bat was a strikeout. Good plate oh. appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't oh, offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over first. So up next, Amasayu Garcia. He's over one. That one misses, and the count's even at two. Nobody out, runner at first. Struck him out looking. Gene Segura, the next up for the Marlins. Over one, he grounded out in his first at bat. Pitch misses there, and it's two and two. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away. Swings and misses, struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. Well, that slider wasn't even close to the strike zone, and he got him to chase. That's just a bad approach right there. Either he was looking for something else and got completely fooled, or he was sitting all over the slider and just couldn't resist the temptation. But, man, really expanded right there and didn't have a chance of making contact with that pitch. Now the left fielder, Jesus Sanchez. Next offering is foul back. You could see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. Next one misses all three. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Arise. The runner at first with two gone. On the ground to short. Toss to Mancini. That's the third out. Inning over. Milans get a bit closer on this homer. And the home team down a run. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. And welcome back. Now the third baseman, Patrick Wisdom. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. And that one hit 97 on the gun. 
Man, I really like the ability to bounce back right there after not getting the call. He probably should have gotten. He didn't let it affect his focus, and he came back with another good pitch to get him swinging. And he deals. Line drive, caught! Man, that's one of those at-bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there, nothing to show for it, but in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at-bat. And now the lefty spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. And that's in the dirt. Two strike. Still two and two after the foul ball. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for strike three. Nothing across here this half. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Cubs two and the Marlins one. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and now it's going to be Nick Fortes. And the right-hander deals. Foul ball. The one-two. Fights it off, you'll see another. To the right side. Tosses to first, and the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. Good slider inside right there. Batter fighting to get there, just rolled over it, got the ground ball. Stepping in, John Birdie. Good swing out of him last time, ripped a liner in the center. Righty delivers. Fouls one off. Two and two. And now the count filled up three and two. Slice to right, and it goes just foul. The pitch. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. And down on strikes he goes, and there's two away. Jazz Chisholm Jr. digs in now. Ball to strike. Hard ground ball base knock. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of the struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game. But all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. Two outs, runner at first. And up next for Miami, Garrett Cooper. Here's a 1-1. Lined into right. Velasquez makes the grab, and that's the inning. Marlins leave one. They're down 2-1. to one. Welcome back. Here's the second baseman, Nico Horner. Horner, a guy you think about with a strong baseball IQ, but just the overall smarts. He comes from an educational background. Both of his parents at one time 
taught at Stanford, and his mom currently is on the faculty at Cal. Oh. Tosses across the first. Now one gone in the top of the sixth. Good, Good fade and sinking that. action of that changeup. Got that hitter to roll Dansby. over. Dansby Swanson stands in. One for two. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Next Dead pitch misses, down. and it's 2-1. And, and you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. Goes down, swinging for the strikeout. Pulled the string on the changeup. You know, variant speeds love, can be just as useful for a pitcher yeah, as yeah. movement. As you <laughs> see right there, it really was in a great location. But the fact that the velocity change had the hitter off balance, and that's all you got to do sometimes. On the ground, a rise. On to first, yeah. and it's a 1-2-3 inning. And the Cubs are down in order. They lead it 2-1. Drew Smiley on the pitch here. Should be a good first matchup for him here. You're He's been doing a great lead. job against right-handed bats so far this season. They've had a lot Number of trouble 11. squaring him up. Drew Smiley. Jorge Soler up at the plate. He's already homered here in this one. And a 1-1. That's inside. That one missed. Movement in the Cubs bullpen. Jeremiah Estrada throwing and getting ready for David Ross. In for a strike, and it's three and two. Really good cutter that he's able to front door and back door. That pitch is devastating. And a three two. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Luis Arias. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate and try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. And it is two and one. Next pitch is popped up. Corner makes the grab for the second out. Now back, right fielder, Abisayu Garcia. Garcia, the next up for the Marlins. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. And now one and one two. Down. Two strikes. Got it by him for the K. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. We're through six full. It's the Cubs two and the Marlins one. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Brian Hoeing. He's pitching on two days rest. Now it's the DH, Seiya Suzuki. The designated hitter. Seiya Suzuki. And a payoff pitch. Stops it on a slide to first. Got him. Great play to keep the leadoff man off base.
Trey Mancini, the next to hit. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. The two two. And that's outside. Activity in the bullpen. Matt Barnes up and loosening in the pen. Three, two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Right side. Garcia makes the grab, and there's two gone. The center fielder, number 24, Cody Bellinger. Here's Cody Bellinger. Saying he, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. Cubs are down quietly, but they still lead it 2-1. to one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the traditional seventh inning stretch. Here comes a new arm for the Cubs, Jeremiah Estrada. He's making his second appearance of the season. Now pitching for Chicago, number 56, Jeremiah Estrada. Gene Segura getting ready to hit. The third baseman. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. That one 95 to finish him off. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. Mm, just misses there. It's a good take. Pitch misses, and the count's full. Nick Cortez to bat next. And he walked him. Oh, looking for a swing and miss right there or for the ump to help him out and make a call with that last pitch, but neither happened. Close pitch, but a good take to earn that walk. One down. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Here comes a 3-2. And there's ball four. Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a really nice plate appearance. Brandon Hughes taking over on the mound. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. First and second, one out. John Birdie, the next up for the Marlins. The next offering misses. And now three and one. Jazz Chisholm Jr. waiting for a turn at the plate. One out. 
The possible tying and go ahead runs on base. That pitch in for a strike. Three and two now. And boy, that was the pitch. 3 1. You want to be really aggressive on the fastball. Next offering is foul back. The pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. So the tying run at second. On the ground to the left. And that's a fair ball. Runner around third on his way to the plate. Throw to third, but he's in there. A run comes in on the play. Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you can come through with a good swing. And there he doesn't try to do too much. Back to the top of the Miami order. Jazz Chisholm Jr., the next up for the Marlins. The 3-1. Swing and a pop-up. Foul territory for the catcher. Makes the catch for the out. Man, it's so frustrating. You got a couple of runners on. You want to oh, try to drive in at least one run. The Maybe you get a little too big with the yeah. swing. Pops out right there, and I tell you what, nobody's more frustrated with that at bat than him. That one misses. Two balls and a strike. Line drive. Down! A three-run homer, his fourth home run of the season. Just like that, they move in front. It's 5-2. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. So two down. Now here is Jorge Soler. He's already homered in this game. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. And a pitch. This to third and foul ball. Started after the one two pitch, appeal to first. He did not go around. Now fly ball to right center. Velasquez moving under this one. Makes the catch inning over. But the big blow of the inning comes right here. A three-run homer. It's 5-2. Major League Baseball is on the show. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eight. A.J. Puck. This southpaw has been really good against left-handed hitters. Number 35. A.J. So up now for Chicago, Patrick Wisdom. He is very much your typical power hitter. I'd say he falls into the three true outcomes category. Well, we've seen more and more of that lately. The ability to drive the ball to slog is getting heavily favored over any discipline or strikeout concerns. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. Well, he went after him right there with one of his best pitches. I'm really surprised that one got away from him. Runner at first with no outs here. Well, it's critical right here that they bear down and turn in some quality at bats. Try to chip away at that lead because if it gets to the ninth, that closer's coming in. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Bullpen activity starting up now. Tanner Scott, the closer of the staff, is getting loose to finish this one off.
the pitch right through there for a strike this is a very important inning here after scoring all those runs you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down the offense has worked hard it's shut down inning time 2-2 two -two now struck him out swinging gassed it right by him great location with that two strike fastball I'll tell you what as a hitter you're looking to protect the outside part of the plate stay back on something off speed so many times that location with two strikes you just can't get around on it and that's a tough one to compete with Nelson Velasquez the next Cub to hit the 1 1 and it's fouled away Misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Popped in the air. Left field. Sanchez gets under it. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's two away. Now that second base. Nico Horner. Here's Nico Horner. Feels like it's less common today that you see a guy like this. The speed component, the contact component, but lack of power. Here's a 1-1. One -one. And that's down it away. He just has to understand that his skill set is unique and he's very valuable for any ball club. If he does that, he'll play a long time in this league. And a 2-2. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Adbert Alzalai. He last pitched two days ago. Alzalai. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Arias. The second baseman, Luis Arias. The 2-1. Pulls that one foul. You know, these Marlins, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. They've hit seven line drives already, and even though some of them have been for outs, there's nothing wrong with delivering consistent hard contact. That's almost always going to lead to positive results. Three and two now. That one the other way. Zips it to first. Lead off man is out here in the eighth. Up next is the Marlon. The right field. And now, Avasayil Garcia. And the pitch. And there's a ball. And it's even up. That front door slider is such a devastating pitch. You don't want to get beat by the inside fastball, so you cheat a little bit, and then by the time it gets there, it's out of the swing play. Swing and a base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Oh, I'm sure he feels really good about that one. And you can turn the ball around at 107 off the bat. It's going to make you feel really good inside. If he elevates that a little bit more, it's definitely out of here. So a man aboard. Gene Segura, the next up for the Marlins. Kicks and deals. 
Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Well, they've had a great plan of attack for him tonight. I mean, finding all the holes in his swing and his approach, just frustrating for him up there. You strike out a guy three times in a game, I think that guy's got to go back and really study some video with his hitting coach, figure out how they're beating him, make this adjustment really quick, because Ward will get around the league in a hurry. Well struck right field. That one is gone. He rockets one to right, and they add on. It's 7-2. Really great job of anticipation there. He knows he throws the sinker. That one down in the zone. You're trying to beat it to the spot it's getting to. Well, he won. Two outs, nobody on. Nick Fortes now at the plate. Two outs. And a count one and two. Right-handed reliever. In the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Line drive, base hit. Love how he became a really no tough out with two five. strikes right there. Short You'll often hear the phrase Go. short to it, long through it, and Murray. that's a great example of it right there. Got the barrel in the hitting zone early, squared it up with the well-timed swing, and came away with a beautiful line drive in the center field. Now here is John Birdie. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Fortes off of first with two away. Foul ball still a one and two count. And a pitch. That's a ball. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. A couple of singles back to back. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. So Brad Boxberger rolls into the game. He pitched yesterday, and we'll see him once again. Now it's the Marlins leadoff hitter, Jazz Chisholm Jr. At the belt and fires. That's a little bit low. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. Kicks and fires. And down on strikes. Good job at damage control right there. Two run shot for Miami this inning. Last chance coming up for the Cubbies. Now Matt Barnes takes over. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're called upon with big leads because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. 
Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. The 1-1. One, one. Well, that's out. There's a swing and a miss. Lifted in the air, right field. Garcia grabs it on the run. Here's the left fielder, Ian Happ. And a pitch. He goes down looking. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Now at the plate, Seiya Suzuki. Right-hander kicks deals. Late that time, and it's strike two. I think he was sitting off speed there. And now it's three and two. That turns out to be a really good take right there, but you don't want to end this game with the bat on your shoulder. It is just one strike away. High fly ball down the left field line. Sanchez going back on it. Still going back. And that'll do it. I don't care if you're a top team or you're a middle of the pack team. Every ball club wants to be dominant at home. Winning a game like this just helps to boost the confidence and makes you look forward to coming out again for the next one. 7-2 your final here today. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby saying so long.